The nation is obviously watching right now the closing arguments in the Derek Tobin trial in Minnesota. And I was hoping you could please walk us through what the federal level of preparedness is right now for a verdict that could be coming in a matter of days. What sort of coordination is there with uh, states, not just in Minnesota, but elsewhere, uh, you know, if there are indeed will be perhaps unrest one way or the other after the riot. Could you walk us through conversations being had with local officials, mayors, governors, and so on? You talked about how the White House is preparing for whatever that verdict is. Congresswoman Maxine Waters said over the weekend that they need to, we've got to stay on the street and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they know that we mean business. Does the president agree with what she said about getting more confrontational? And then lastly, on the Chauvin trial, uh, we, we're expecting a verdict any day now. I know you said you're not going to get ahead of it, but we've also seen, uh, but with that, we've also seen, of course, the, the shooting of Adam Toledo in Chicago. I mean, what is the White House doing to address uh, policing? Mm -hmm. are, are there any more executive orders in the pipeline or under consideration? I mean, what signal are you going to send to to those communities? Well, uh, there's a number of steps we've actually taken, the Department of Justice has taken. Let me first reiterate that uh, the President has said repeatedly that he believes we need police reform. That is why he's on calling on Congress to deliver that to his desk. It is incumbent upon Congress and the Senate to move forward. And obviously there are discussions and negotiations about what that looks like. But we've seen an unacceptable and a long-standing trend um, that is the cause of immense pain and hardship across the country. During the campaign, uh, then, uh, then former Vice President Biden emphasized the importance of the Justice Department using the authority uh, he spearheaded as a senator to investigate systemic police misconduct. And there are a couple of steps that have been taken in recent weeks. Last week, Attorney General Garland reversed a Trump administration memo that limited the use of consent decrees with respect to investigation of police department departments and reversing the prior memo returns DOJ to the DOJ to the use of all civil rights enforcement tools it has for its crucial work. Uh, the president also pledged to appoint DOJ leadership that would prioritize pattern or practice investigations that would, of course, ensure there were um, uh, that investigations into uh, racially unfair and inappropriate conduct were 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 taken seriously and prioritized. Uh, and he has two critical nominees pending who would do exactly that: Vanita Gupta to be associate attorney general and Kristen Clark to head the civil rights division. He also, of course, supports uh, firmly supports the George Floyd Act. As I've said, he believes there's a special, there's definite urgency at this point in time, and we'll continue con to convey that. I'd also note our initial budget calls for increasing funding for the Department of Justice's Civil Rights Division by millions of dollars in order to advance accountability and reform for abusive police practices. And finally, multiple states uh, have enacted bipartisan policing reform statutes in recent months. And we believe uh, that those are encouraging signs in some states of the country. It's not the only thing that needs to happen. We need federal legislation, but that's also something we certainly haven't been encouraging. One last question.